Jim, how you doing? It's good to see you again. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for asking. Hey, you know, I've been looking at, I got this, I did this book a while back called Backyard Beekeeper, and you may have seen it. And I'm looking at updating it somewhat. And I got to the part where it says, you know, it talks about keeping records. And I'm going to bet that you and I, for 30 plus years, have been telling every beginning beekeeping class that we've taught, be sure to keep good records. And then we move on. And then we move on. You left that hanging in the air, Kim. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kim Flottam. And I'm Jim, too. And we're here today on Honey Bee Obscure to talk about re- record keeping. You are listening to Honey Bee Obscura, brought to you by Growing Planet Media, the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, hosts Kim Flottam and Jim Tu explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world. Get ready for an engaging discussion to delight and inform all beekeepers. If you're a long timer or just starting out, Sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as Kim and Jim explore all things honeybees. I, I'm 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 a I'm a decade behind in in the technology of record keeping. But before I get there, I want to start just asking a real basic question: What do you keep records of on your bees? And and I, I'll go back to what almost forty years ago. The USDA people I worked with. They kept really good records. They had a notebook in the field, and they wrote down everything that they did. And then I worked with some beekeepers for a while who were, and I've worked with commercial beekeepers who did the same thing, kept all of their records kept all of their records on the hive cover. They'd go into a colony, and they'd find a queen or not find a queen, brood, lots of brood, no brood, hardly any brood, needs to feed, needs new frames, needs another box. That would all go on the top. And when you watch them, you say, yeah, that makes lots of sense. Until you get home and you go, let's see, that third colony I looked at, did I write that down? And what was it that I wrote? You ever see anybody put notes on the top of a hive cover? Uh, Kim, you know I have. As old as we are, we've seen everything. But yes, I actually brought bees from a widow whose beekeeping husband had passed on. And he kept records on his inner covers. And, oh. and so it's fine so long as you don't change inner covers from one colony to <laughs> another. But I felt like I was rummaging through the man's sock drawer, reading this now passed on beekeeper's comments about what he had done with that colony and when he did it. It was only about 10 or 15 items long. It's not like it was extensive records, queen replacement, brood disease, whatever. I've seen that written on the colonies. I guess I'm here to say that's probably not the best way to keep good records because your memory, my memory, between the bee yard and home is essentially non-existent. So I'm yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to do me much good. So the next thing people tell you to do on record keeping is to get a notebook. And take a, that's the next low tech thing you can do is bring a notebook to the to the bee yard. Now I've looked at that and I've done that over the years, not consistently, not well, and I don't know where my notebook is anymore. But the thing that they suggest that I you know I have a notebook and every colony has a page in that notebook, so that when I go to colony twenty three. I open up the notebook to cut to colony twenty three, and in there I've got all sorts of data that I wrote down uh, over the course of the season, maybe even last season, and stuff that I can I can I know I'm going to need to remember, but because I've written it down here in the notebook, I can take it home and do something with it. I'm going to get there a minute, but notebooks are good until you leave one in a bee yard open and it rains. I. I... <laughs> I'm trying to think, do I have an incidence of that? No doubt I do. But I just lose mine. Yeah. When I've used notebooks, I I would think this is the style of notebook. This is the layout. I'm going to copy these pages. I'll just fill in the blanks. And then I'll do it, you know, for 
a length of time. I don't know. Let's just say nine months. And then something happens. You know, I get I get a cold, I get sick, or I go on vacation. And then when you come back, it it's just doesn't have the shining anymore. And then when you find that notebook three years later, it's like a walk down memory lane. Oh, my stars, look <laughs> at this. This is when I got my first expanded polystyrene box right here. I didn't remember that. So when you've, you've been talking about keeping good records, which makes me wonder of what are bad records. I guess if you're keeping good records, I must be keeping bad records. And then we talked about writing on the hive, and now we're writing in notebooks. What's the difference in record keeping and log keeping? What's the difference in record keeping and a diary? Basically, we're, we're just recording our memories, aren't we? Basically, yeah, but here's the thing. If you get to notebook in the field and talking to people who do this with some sort of regularity, I can put in that notebook needs a queen for colony 53. And when I get home and I'm taking that notebook because what I've learned to do, what I learned to do a long time ago and don't do anymore, of course, but what I learned to do is I take that field notebook home and I take the notes that I made for colony 53 and I put them in my home notebook for Colony 53. So I've got two going. So now I've got two things I can lose. Good, good. That's the sign <laughs> of a good, highly accomplished beekeeper. <laughs> and you probably left your hive tool out there and the smoker was still burning. Uh, and the smoker yep, was still yep. burning. If you, do it, if you do it consistently, you do it right. And I know people that do this and it's it borders on a religion and that's probably a good thing, at least good for the bees in that they're well taken care of. Uh, or better taken care of than I'm doing. But they take notes in the field for Colony 53. They take that notebook home, and they take those notes for Colony 53, and and they put them in there, and they got a to-do list for all the colonies that they looked at this year. And you know, I need supers on 54, and I've, I've got uh, some, so I got to add some, I got to feed 55, and, you know, those sorts of things. So I got a to-do list. So the next time I go to look at bees, and maybe even on that to-do list is when I need to go look at those bees next. But on that notebook, on that page in that notebook, what is Colony 53 going to need? So getting, getting it transferred from field to home, because that, no, that home notebook, can, I can add stuff to there that I remember after I got home and I'm sitting down. I was out in the field. B had two bees in my veil, and it was going to rain in about four minutes, and I got to hurry. I forget things. I don't get things in there. But once I get home, then I can add things. Now, we can take this a little bit further and say, okay, what are you taking, keeping notes of? What records are you keeping? What do we need to know that happened, is happening and may happen if we don't, or if we do, do the right thing. That's That, that gets to be the decision-making process. Let me take it another step here. What are you using to record this stuff? And if you've been following, if you've been following our podcasts on, on uh, Beekeeping Today, that's, we've talked to a bunch of people who are now not taking notes at all when they're in the field because everything is being recorded by some sort of electronic device that lives in the hive. They've got temperature and humidity and CO2 and weight and all of the almost everything you need to know about what's going on in that colony. They take that data, they send it to the cloud, you go home, go to the cloud, get it and bring it and drop it down on your computer. You got anything like that going on? I, I do have something like that going on. And at this point, it's a good spot to say, let's stop and hear from someone who actually can sell you those devices that can let you electronify your life. Hey, has winter's chill and weather forced you inside? Well, did you know that Better Bee offers winter classes you can take from the comfort of your own home? Our classes are taught by Dr. David Peck, and Eastern Apicultural Society Master Beekeeper Ann Fry. Our classes range from basic courses on essentials of beekeeping all the way up to specifics on planning for the seasons ahead 
and for your success. Visit betterbe.com forward slash classes to view all of our upcoming learning opportunities. Those gadgets, Kim, that's, that's the next world. I, I got to tell you, I'm trying to make a thought here because I'm thinking of a beekeeper who years ago said, I come to bee meetings to learn about bees, not to learn about computers. But, you know, if people are listening to us right now, they're electronically savvy. So the devices you're describing, I think, would fit in very nicely with this audience. I'm not selling them. I'm just saying this is where the technology is. That while you're while you're home watching television and washing the the dinner dishes, that information's being uploaded about weight gains, weight losses, colony temperatures, and that that technology I think is just going to continue to develop as the beehive becomes more and more computerized. The good thing about that data is that it gives you information that you're not going to be able to get when you go up there and take the top off. What's the humidity inside that hive? Well, I take the top off and it just changed right now. Uh, what's the weight? And if you got a scale in your bee yard, I used to have a portable scale. I could lift, put it under the lip, lift it up, get the weight, and I knew, but I had to be there to do that. So you can get a lot of data from those internal devices, and, it's, and a lot of it's going to be valuable. Some of it, uh, some of those things that uh, we've talked about, are listening to the bees. They're telling, they're listening, and they're interpreting what that sound means to the bees in the hive, and sending you that interpretation again via the cloud, so you can tell: is the colony queenless? Is there something going on in there? Some pest or predator that's making, you know, giving you trouble. So there's that. But I'll tell you one thing. So let me back up. Notebooks are good, but there's notebooks and and other ways to keep to keep good information on that hive. Some of it you just got to go to the bee yard and see because that computer inside the beehive isn't going to tell you that the roof on colony 78 is cracked and falling apart and you better bring a new one the next time you come out there. It's not going to tell you that you need to bring the weed eater. It's not going to tell you a lot of things about the environment that the hive is in. It's really good at telling you what's inside. Outside, hmm, not so much. While you were talking, I was thinking about those gadgets and devices and the things they will help you do that would be harder to do if you'd still carry the notebook. I'm not opposed to the notebook. I got to tell you the truth, Kim. More often than not, I I am just trying to remember what I did last season, what I bought last season, how things worked last year. So in a way, even doing it from memory is a kind of record keeping, right? But the thing I wanted to say was that these devices we're talking about, they let you crunch those numbers. So if if that is a savvy piece of equipment of, in the app that you're using, it'll tell you exactly how many queens you lost that year, how many queens you replaced when the weight gain started. And you can begin to bring that data together into a comprehensive format that you could do with a written notebook, except you got to sit there with a pen pencil and an eraser and make lists and figure it out the long way. So in theory, these devices lets that data become more meaningful to you more quickly. But you know one thing it doesn't they don't do? They may tell you your colony is queenless. Where did that queen come from? What's the history of the queens that you've been buying over the last five years from this supplier, that supplier, some other supplier, some that you raised your own. So I'll go back to having some kind of written because that data, the machinery in your colony isn't going to pick up that kind of information. The other thing that's going on is when I lose a colony, colony dies, I come out to the bee yard and there ain't a bee flying out of number 59. Uh, so I go take a look at 59, and lo and behold, there isn't a bee in it. It's gone. Did it swarm? Did Varroa get it? Well, you know, so there's some interpretation that I'm going to need there that maybe the data from those machines inside can help me uh, interpret. Maybe not. But 
I got a colony, and I, it's full of equipment that I'm not going to just leave in that colony. I'm going to put it in another colony. How do you, and maybe it's in the instruction book that came with the equipment that I just bought, how do you know that it that what what colony this is in now? And you got to there again. You got to write it down someplace. Yeah, I'm moving it from 53 because 53 died, and I'm moving it over to 71 because 71. I just put a package in, and I want to track that package from from the day I put the package in, and be able to tell when the queen got released and when all of the things are going on. And hopefully, that internal data will give me much, if not all, of that information? Is it going to tell me that I need to add a super? Is it going to tell me I need to add food? There's, there's I guess this is kind of a learn-as-you-go process uh, where a notebook in the field and a notebook at home are really going to help also. I'm trying to catch up because <laughs> you said a lot quickly. How about this? I'm trying to think about the most basic aspects of record keeping. I've got a smoker going. I've got a hive open. I got burr combs everywhere. I've got honey dripping. And I'm trying to pick up a pencil and write on a piece of paper. So I can't tell the listeners or you the best way. Do you have a string on the pencil and keep it tied to the pad? Or, Kim, how about this? Because it drives me crazy. I, I do beehive photography. And to this day, I can't tell you the best way to keep propolis and wax and honey off my camera equipment. But if I pick up my, my phone in the field, can I just leave a verbal message to myself instead of having to write it down? So I just leave a quick message. And then when I get home, I take those messages off, and then I add them to my database. Yeah, I need supers. I need more honey. The hive outer cover is cracked. And then I add that to the data that I got from the app that's taking colony measurements. And then I do have a thorough aspect. But then there's this. How do you keep obliterating your phone with that same <laughs> propolis and wax and the residue and dropping the phone and in the rain. So the, I was going to go there. The devil is always in the details. So I, <laughs> I'm i not suggesting this as a common protocol, but sometimes you just have to remember, Kim, because that's where you yeah. store it in your head. You mentioned that before, pages of memory, and I think I'm. I think my page, my memory book is yeah. kind of getting towards the end. Here. <laughs> I'm over. I'm overriding memory right now. <laughs> and I want to say this: this, this record keeping thing. This was on you. I, I I like the topic, but it's your topic. But I don't think it's wrong, Kim. Over the years, as you keep bees, to change the way you keep records. I don't think someone has to start day one, step one, first day beekeeper, and then 12 years be filling in the same type logbook, composition tablet, or whatever they're using. You may start using a pad and paper, or you may start writing on the hive top, and then 5, 10, 15 years later, you've got the best app going, and you've got everything electronified, and those days of using a pad and paper are just ancient history now. Don't you... Would you say it's okay to change the way you keep records as your bee operation and as your ability evolves? Yeah, I think you hit the right word there, evolve. I was going to use that because that's, that's what happens. The thing that beekeepers, myself included, need to keep in mind is the world today ain't the same as it was yesterday, let alone two years ago or five years ago. So what's going on outside right now and what's going to be going on outside a year from now, five years from now, what do I need to, th what did I learn from the past that I can apply to the future? I guess that's probably the sums that up. Yeah. Nice. Yep. But, but it comes down to all of this, all of this put together. What are you take, keeping track of? What equipment are you using to keep a track? Uh, what are you, what equipment are you using to keep track of it? How are you storing it? How are you retrieving it so you can use the data and apply it to what you need to do next time. 
before you before you it's it's uh, somewhere December right now before you sit down and start thinking about next year think about all of these things and kind of get in your head and your garage the equipment that you're going to need to do a good job of keeping notes because keeping notes can save a lot of bees every season and a lot of time and it can let you be proactive you know that swarming started at a particular time so the swarming season starting doesn't really catch you off guard as badly. So you're better prepared as a beekeeper for what's coming up in the next few weeks if you know what happened at this time in the last three to four to five years. And and if your bee yard is down the road a ways, it isn't in your backyard, it's far enough away that when you get there, when you get to your bee yard, you open the door or the truck and you look out and you go low and behold the apples are blooming here but they're not even leafed out at home yet because there's a microclimate that my bees are in that I need to be aware of so lots of things going on lots of things to keep records of and I, I, I don't think we solved anything here but I, what I hope what I hope I've done for you is to give you some ideas some things to think about to get ready for next year, because I got a list now about four pages long that I need to get ready for next year. Where are you going to stick that list? On the door of your office? <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it in my notebook. I, I, I want to close on this note, Kim. <laughs> People are going to do what they're going to do. I mean, records are useful, but if they become a burden, if they become something else to do that you don't enjoy, you're not going to do it. So... You're going to have to figure out what works for you on how how you know what you need. It It's a personal decision, and it's a decision that may change over time. I think that's a I think that's a good point to to hang this one up on because a long time ago I didn't have fun keeping records, and I don't keep records nearly as much or as well as I should anymore. But maybe this will get me going for next season. I'm going to end on that note, friend. I'll go back and I'll get a pencil and a pencil sharpener and I'll use technology <laughs> that I know works. No, actually, I won't. I will use my phone more. I, I think my phone is a very viable beekeeping tool now. All right, do something, Kim. Just have some idea. If you don't do something, then you're doomed to repeat it, right? Yep, yep. All right. Somehow keep some kind of notes. That's a, Get ready for next that's season. That's perfect. Somehow... Do something, listeners. <laughs> Good enough. Thanks, guys. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.